miss her. I want her to come home. My god mom, but more like my best friend. She, she draws you in like that. That's why. And I'm really going to miss her very, very much. I love her with all my heart. Has requested an attorney as he sits behind bars here at the jail. You see the top of the video, your girl is back again with another true crime story time of you to my channel. Hey girl, hey. And if you're a returning subscriber, I don't even gotta say nothing because you know what's up, I know what's up, we know what's up, and that's on way. That's on way. This on period and mirror had a little lamb. As y'all can see by the title of the video, today we're talking about the case of Kathleen Moore. Um, I do want to give y'all a little disclaimer. This case does deal with domestic violence. So if you're sensitive to the topic, please click off the video. I do not want to trigger um anybody, but I do want to bring awareness to domestic violence cases just simply because I feel like more than ever a lot of these cases are resulting in death and I would just like to bring awareness to that and y'all know black and brown victims do not get enough news coverage so yeah without further ado let's go ahead and get into the video so who is Kathleen Moore? Kathleen Moore is a 34 year old mother from Fargo Florida. Um, Kathleen does reside in Newport Ritchie where she recently finished training as a phlebotomist at Southern Technical Institute. Next she was pursuing her nursing career working at a bar called Whiskey Wing and Bar and Grill. Kathleen was a bartender and a server. Her co-workers just describe her as being very charismatic and they just said anyone that knew Kathleen they knew that she was to love and she was just a very nice worker a hard worker. She's an amazing person she's just one of the ones that you can call when you need something two o'clock in the morning you know she just she's there for you all the time she just spent like three hours with me two weeks ago because my daughter was running for homecoming and she helped me make all the flyers and you know she was just always somebody that you can count on on November the 28th, 2021, Kathleen invited her boyfriend of five years, which is Colin Knapp, to her home. So he lived in Paso County, which is by Tampa. So he came to her home and they were just going to go out that night and hang out. She also invited her best friend to accompany them. Her best friend name was Nikki. Nikki stated that she had never met um, Kathleen's boyfriend and they were apparently together for five years on and off. So they end up going to a concert that night. They went to a few bars that night and Nikki said that the whole night Collins and Kathleen was arguing she don't really know what they was arguing about but they was just bickering back and forth once the night ended they went back to Nikki's house and Kathleen told Nikki that she was gonna leave her car parked at her house she was gonna leave her car there and she'll come back to get it in the morning because she had to go to work so she hopped in a car with Collins and she went back to Pasco County and that's where he resides so apparently once um, Kathleen was at Collins' house, they were arguing and they were bickering. And at this time, what they were arguing about or what the dispute was about, it wasn't clear um, to anyone, but they was just arguing and bickering. So two days later, um, Nikki started to get worried. Her coworker started to get worried because Kathleen didn't show up to work, which was unlike her. She didn't show up to any of her nursing classes, which was unlike her as well. Monday night is when I started reaching out to people like this is not like her up monday morning to get ready for work myself and realize that she wasn't here yet or had called me to like say hey i'm running late or whatever that's when i was like something's not right and immediately called her phone and it went straight to voicemail of course kathleen's car was still parked at nikki house so nikki knew that kathleen didn't go to work um they kept calling her phone calling her phone calling her phone and um, they pinged her phone and someone answered her phone and it was a homeless man. So apparently two days after um, Kathleen was missing, a homeless man was digging through the trash can and he found Kathleen's phone and he ended up turning it into the um, station in Port Ritchie. So as soon as this happened, of course, her family and her co-workers, they are worried. They assumed that Kathleen was missing. So they went ahead and filed a missing report to the um to the I don't remember the name of the county of Port Ritchie but it was in whatever county that Kathleen lived but when they uh, pinged the phone it was in Pasco County so they end up transferring the case to a detective by the name of um, Chris so once Chris got onto the case they began searching for her and the first person they decided to um, look into was of course her boyfriend which was Collins Knapp um, the last thing Nikki told her was the last time I seen her, we was out one night. They were arguing all night. I don't really know much about this boyfriend. Um, this is my first time meeting him throughout five years. Um, but, you know, her family did what they could do. They began, you know, 
setting up a search in their hometown, in their area. They started putting up flyers all around town for her asking anybody that they see her. They put information on what she last had on, how she looked. Um, they just went to all the familiar spots where Kathleen well known at and they asked around if they seen her. So the deputies arrived to Colin House, I believe it was the same day or the following day after a missing report went out. When they arrived there, they said Collins was not being cooperative at all. They asked him if he had seen Kathleen and he said him and Kathleen had gotten an argument about food they got in a dispute about food and he don't know if she left with another guy or if she left in an uber all he knows is the same night um that they seen her on november the 28th she left abruptly and he doesn't know where she went or how she left he basically told them she could have gotten an uber or she would could have left with another guy and y'all i just want to um put my two cents in right here just simply because I find that weird. If you my man of five years and we get in an argument or a dispute about food, he said that the dispute was about food. Food. Um, we, we don't know this. We still don't know what's the reason um, why Kathleen passed, but he basically told the sheriff that they got in a dispute about food and she just abruptly left. My thing is, if you my boyfriend of five years, how don't you know if I went home in an Uber or if I had somebody to pick me up, like how how don't how don't you know that? And they didn't live close by. They lived in two different um counties. So that's what the sheriff said. Collins told them, of course, they didn't have any solid proof or anything. And at this point, Collins wasn't a primary suspect. I don't know how he wasn't a primary suspect because the deputies did say that um he wasn't cooperative at all. If somebody told my boyfriend of five years that I was missing and you're being very short and you're not providing enough information or you're not trying to help or you don't look shook, you would have automatically been a primary suspect to me. So when I was doing my research on this case and I read that, I automatically thought, you got him, like he's the one. But at that time, they said he was not the primary suspect. Um, two days later, they did obtain surveillance footage from um, Colin's job. I'm not going to say where he worked at, but he did work at a popular um, steakhouse in Pasco County. So they obtained the surveillance footage from the job and it showed um, Collins throwing away objects at like a weird hour of the night. To be exact, I believe they said it was like 1.30 a.m. in the morning, and which is very strange to me. His job wasn't even open. Why are you at your job and why are you throwing something in a public trash can? Like that's a little peculiar. But nonetheless, y'all, the deputies began to get a warrant. They went to Chris's job. They took the entire dumpster and they emptied it and it filled and they begin their investigation so based on the investigation authorities searched the content of the dumpster from the restaurant where um nat worked and they discovered blood identified as miss kathleen's um her clothing that she wore that night they found um her id that night they found her debit card they found her backpack and they found uh, her clothes her clothes were filled with blood and based on the blood they basically stated that um she was deceased, she was no longer alive based on the amount of blood that they found. So of course that warranted them to arrest um, Colin Knapps. He's previously been arrested for aggravated assault and domestic violence. Tonight Knapp has requested an attorney as he sits behind bars here at the jail while he refuses to cooperate with investigators as they try to bring Kathleen Moore's body home. On Monday the 6th, 2021, they did arrest Collins for second degree murder without bond just simply because he had a lot of other previous charges um, I believe he had over 21 charges and a lot of those charges dealt with um, domestic violence on previous partners that he's had. Um, they basically just held him there. He did try to bond out until they said it as no bond. Um, I also want to mention that they pled with him. They asked him where was Kathleen's body. They knew he did it. They just couldn't confirm because they couldn't find Kathleen's body. At the time, her family and her friends, they're still searching for her. And they're still kind of holding on to hope, y'all. Like, of course, the detectives had already told them um, that she had possibly passed away just based on the amount of blood that they obtained from the search. 
but at the time her family and friends they just had a hope that maybe she was still alive very strong family here so i figured that if when we didn't hear from cat by wednesday that i figured she was just lost in the dark so this isn't a memorial that we made for her. it's just lighting her way home so she can find her way back i believe the following day they did find kathleen 50 feet from colin's um house at this time we don't know what's the cause of death we know that um he killed her he hasn't been convicted yet it's still second degree um murder her family and friends are just wondering why and they don't have enough information y'all there's not a lot of information about this case other than what i have um provided here just simply because the case is ongoing but i just really resonated with this case i will keep y'all updated with it because at this point i'm intrigued i really want to know um why like her family wants to know why everybody wants to know why and I feel like this is really shocking just because a lot of her friends and family said they never met Mr. Collins at all. They did know of him, but they didn't know much about him. And at this time, Collins is not speaking. He's not giving an explanation. The only thing her best friend know and her family know is that there was an argument that took place and they don't know why. Yeah, y'all, and that's pretty much the end of this true crime story time. Again, I will keep y'all updated. This still is a ongoing case. I would like to know if his verdict is going to be changed from second degree to first degree. I would like to know the cause of death. It's just so many questions I have, uh, the family have. I am going to keep y'all updated with everything. Um, if you're familiar with the case, please let me know your feelings and your thoughts down below. Again, the family is in my prayers and peace. I'll see y'all in my next And the homicide investigation. Can you go over his, his uh, previous record again? I know you talked about he has a number of felonies and kind of give us a sense of the extent of that in the most recent time he's been a guest of the state. He's been arrested multiple times. Uh, another sheriff listed up all the, 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 the charges. Uh, we are looking into more details on those, mm -hmm. those, those cases. Um, some of them were domestic violence. However, they weren't with this current victim, a different victim. So we are also looking into those cases as well. But how many, how many of the felons, because you listed the number of felons, uh, convictions. They, yeah, and, yeah uh, I'm, the amount of convictions I have to go back on, he has been arrested though for 10 felony and 9 misdemeanor since 2004. Felony, 10 felonies and 9 misdemeanors he's been arrested for. Arrested for. I don't, I'm not sure about the convictions right now. I don't have that with me right now. Um, ag assault, aggravated assault, aggravated battery, domestic violence. I know there was some narcotics in there also charges. Right. Battery. Domestic violence. And I think the domestic violence was in 2013. Have there been any previous reports of domestic violence incidents at that house while he was with Kathleen during the course of their relationship? I know it was on again, off again, according to friends. So our suspect and victim are mostly from the Largo area of Pinellas County. Um, our suspect has lived in Paso County very long, approximately a year. He owns that home that we are currently looking at. Um, he and her do not have any history in our county. Do they have history then in Pinellas? No, only history of arguments and, and possible uh, domestic disputes are from family and friends telling us that. We have no idea, idea at this point where her body may e either be in Pinellas County or here in Pasco. We have no idea of the location of, uh, I mean, any idea of the region? So, no, sir. So what I can tell you is approximately 35 to 40 hours. Like I said, I hate to say it, a head start, but our suspect had 35 to 40 hours. So in theory, the body could be within that, that distance of time. 